So I want to talk about Morals and Dog by Albert Pike. So I started reading this book. Got to about three to four, maybe even five chapters done on this thing. And because I just wanted to comprehend why the Freemasons think they're so much better than everyone else. And the club, you know, what's up with the club? Because if you're not a part of the club, you don't get certain inalienable rights guaranteed through their brothership. So upon reading, I really see the hypocrisy in everything that's stated in this book. And that Albert Pike definitely was misconstrued when it comes to the whole term freedom. And it's funny because they entrust tr freedom as one of the highest ideals. I think it's called the Trinity, freedom, liberty, and wisdom or whatever. And they talk about the G, they talk about the Q, the perfection of the Q, and why that's the symbol of Freemasonry because it represents perfection. I believe it was like 13 something. I don't know. It's in the book. And, you know, I'm not too gaga over this shit because honestly, it's more or less they even speak in here that it, not to take them serious. And then when people consent, they give them absolute domain, um, ad hominem, whatever it's called, or just the poor i can't even <laughs> i don't care about these freaking words and they hold rome to be one of the highest aspects of what they consider the paragon of society and in reality i don't see rome as anything special because they were trojans and they had lost their civil civilization due to a war after stealing women so if you want to hold up a bunch of women thieves to the highest of your exaltation then you know what you're not you're wrong. And this claim that only their rules and their regulations can administer true utopias also shows another fallacy in the fact that they don't believe that man has the ability to govern themselves or administer their own sense of justice and whatever avenue it needs to be allocated into. And it's a lot of word salad. It really is. It's incredible the amount of words that are used in this book. And I definitely, I had to read it with a dictionary because, I mean, this man's very um, articulate. He can really speak well. And he has a, a knack for words. And that's the whole Hermes cult. They're all about the words. They're all about using that legal ease on your ass because you can't read backwards or something you can't see all the symbols inside of a sentence just like the bible you know the bible's full of that so it leads me to believe that they also wrote it, that bible book they're the ones who are building society a state craftual ability because why moses was brought into the desert where there's nothing because god was testing his ass and trying to see if he has what it takes to become you know the rulers of the world and as far as I'm concerned with the Bible, uh, Moses wasn't given access to the Holy Land. So I guess in terms he had failed his duties, but that doesn't mean there's no hope. So, because someday there will be, there was Emmanuel came until everyone stopped being fucking idiots. And they gave him some weird ass name and the Jesuits stole that shit and took it and conquered and killed everybody. And then the Knights Templar, Jacques de Molay, came around and was like, yo, what the fuck? This Pope shit's messed up. We just found a Baphomet statue up inside this temple, and we don't know what's going on anymore. Because <laughs> that's just a divine representation of the Indiang totally balanced out to create the dualist aspect of manifestation. That really has nothing to do with some tranny-breasted dude having sex with females in this modern age, what people think. Um, it's about balancing that Jungian anima animus. I mean, that's why he philosophized it. That's why he, you know, was able to explain that nature that every man has those aspects of his opposite, and it's up to us to balance and use that to manifest. And if you don't, you go crazy, and you really do degrade. Because I've experienced that. So, but in in essence, as morals and dogma and stuff, they had they say that you have to be yourself for a little bit, then and hypocrisy these guys say that they're the rulers and that everyone else isn't initiated into the mysteries of the sacred knowledge and i just think that's some shit i think that's some craziness because if you go to public education it sucks like 
you'll never learn any of this stuff. And even if you are knack to these things or you have an interest, you'll never know until later in life. And you'll never be able to walk through those gates at a young age so you can pr progress beyond your wildest dreams and become the best possible uh, mind that you can coincide with the heart because it's not about the mind. It's not about conquering the mind. The mind conquers you. So you conquer it with the heart and the heart usurps all of its rule upon the mind and then you become connected and that's the truth that's just connecting your chakras all seven and that's you know you want to talk about chakras i talk about energy it's like little points in your body where certain energy frequencies like planets and stuff coalesce into your being through your torrid field because we are fields we're magnetisms we're full of energy your heart's the strongest organ in your body so for them to claim reason and intellect all this stuff that's all of the mind you know and I'm, we're more than our minds and that's the truth and that's what i see as freemasonry losing out because they also prop up love but in essence like loving your enemies like that's that whole term is crazy because you're not supposed to take care of your enemies you're supposed to you're supposed to forgive but you never fucking forget so you can't ever be taken advantage of again by people who have lesser um I wouldn't say morals, but self prudence or self indulgement because you do always, there are some times you have to think of yourself. You think of, you know, how am I going to eat today, gain the energy I need to do what I got to do? And if you're doing things in the betterment of the people around you and your spheres and influences, then you need to make sure you're taking care of your energy because it can get vamped, it can get taken away. Someone can talk to you for three hours about absolutely nothing but bullshit, and that's stealing your energy. And that's that's why I hate conversations that go nowhere. All this like, oh, let's talk about the weather and stuff. It's bullshit. And that's this all comes back to this morals and dogs movement, because if you know how to control yourself, control your energy, you won't be put into those types of positions where you're going to be abused or you'll be able to take the scepter away from those who try to steal it from you. And that's the crown. Everyone's stealing crowns. Crowns. I would say the biggest crown royals <laughs> would be um, Hollywood or CIA, FBI, these people who run these propagation, propaganda, nonsensical, reach around bullshit and make society do their bidding. I mean, look at the drug trade, look at child trafficking, look at all the ships sending over shit all over across the world that no one really needs. What does the FBI, CIA have to do with that? Um, I don't know, but they're not doing anything about it. You know, there's tons of environmental damages going on. That's, you know, that's an investigation that needs to be done. The CIA intelligence, you know, they should be all up on China and they're saying, oh, wow, they're polluting everything and they're sending out tons of toxins into the air and it's messing up the environment. Or you can talk about the oil and how that's destroying the planet, how it's causing more earthquakes and it's a heat up because it's coolant for the world and they're all pumping it out. We're burning it in our gasoline vehicles. Like, how about all those natural? How about those disasters? You know, CIA, FBI. Why doesn't anyone ever take down any of these people? I don't know if anyone say we got to stop doing this. Let's just stop. No one says that, and that's all these Freemasons. They don't give a fucking shit. They think it's our job. If if they're doing something wrong, then they get usurped and destroyed and punished. But they think they're doing the right things, and that's why I have a big problem with that because they don't let anyone even say that they're doing the wrong things, and that it's not about the minds of the heart first and foremost so for them to be lost in the mind shows that there's some serious disconnection going on and i i'm for one not a part of it and all you gotta do is read these books and you can see you know everything they know they tell you about the g they tell you about the uh <laughs> i don't even they tell you everything pretty much about their symbols in this book and it's not a mystery and that's you know, I have to be initiated to read your shit. You know, I can just go and buy it online, pay with the money, because that's what you guys all worship is this money, art, bullshit. And they always say, permeate the arts. That's what all this. And they want to penetrate God's mind. It's so sick. It's so weird. A little boys club, you know. Craziness. And they quote Paul in this book. They they talk about genosis. They talk about Yada Block and all that stuff and the false creation of Eve and all this stuff. So it's just so... It's like, it just seems like lostness. Like these people think they know and they pretend they know and they're such narcissists about what they know. It's just sophist shit. I see that in Rome. It's all the sophists. These people are sophists. Beware of scribes.